Now, I know you and I have discussed this a little bit in the past. Yeah. Um, but specifically, there's a couple of things I think that I want to highlight for everyone and we want to highlight. Sure. Um, and it starts with how you hold the club at setup yep. and the wrist movements uh, during the balance. Way. And even if you didn't have a club and you were yeah. watching this, just make a fist. Fist out. And ultimately, what I'm looking to do is let's flatten the top of Eric's wrist right off the bat. So yeah. we just went from radial deviation or cocked to neutral or uncocked Got okay it. and if yeah. it went down any further we'd call that ulnar deviation and uncocked but most good players they just start with the top of the wrist flat yeah. there might be some bend this way yeah but we don't see tour players starting with a lot of bend there Got okay it. so yeah. once you take your grip now take your grip and you'll see tour so players this. do this every weekend once they have their grip they'll hold the club out in front of them just let it fall a little bit. Both hands on it. And and that, that which is such a small topic, I just want to pause for a second, because I think 98% of people watching this may have never uh, seen, heard, or thought of that before. Well, this little angle. and here's the deal. I, geez, I played the third hole great, but the fourth hole, I fell apart. Yeah. Well, if these angles are changing from one swing to the next, your ball is likely to be changing from one swing to the next. Got it. So it's like once you take your grip, it's like, okay, now set the wrist conditions. Keep that How we want them. Absolutely. Now, why is that important, Marty? Why, why do I want to have that flat? What does that lend towards later well, on? Well, a couple of things. Put both hands on it. Yeah. So if you accidentally had, say, 15 degrees of bend there and you didn't know about it, well, that's yeah. going to force you to set up to it differently. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's like, there, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, okay, once you have the wrist, or the, your hands set on the club, then just go ahead and flatten the top of the left wrist. You'll have a better awareness of where to even stand for the ball. So, so could we say two things with that? Number one, by me setting this uh, flat every time, yep. makes it easier for me to set up to the ball the same every time. Correct. And number two would be, uh, if this is, let's say this was hinged more, so this had yep. an angle. I would need to bend over more at address. 100%. And in general, you and I would say, uh, the more if I'm too bent over at address, that's usually going to lead to some standing up later issues. Yeah. So the other benefit would be not only can I set up the same way, yep. but also it pro the more this would go uh, vertical, so unhinged, yep. the kind of taller, if you will, yes. less bent over. And we wouldn't want to see... Not you overdone. Know, yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, Bryson DeChambeau is kind of on the spectrum, and I'm a big believer that if a tour player is doing it, yeah. Well, then I guess it's okay to do. It can work. And yeah. If they're winning. If <laughs> yeah. they're winning. And he's sure. done a pretty good job of that. Okay, so we have the idea of the lead wrist here being flat at address. We talked about from address in the impact, I'm going to go up and forward. Correct. Now, we know that there's different grip styles. Yes. So how could my grip affect what I do there? Okay, so take your grip and just hold the golf club out in front. So for the people at home, if, if we put this golf club in a vice... Okay. And I said, okay, Eric, we're going to weaken your grip. Basically, that'd be taking his left hand and turning it counterclockwise yep. as I'm looking at it. Yep. Okay? Yep. And in which case, if I see a weaker grip, that's fine, because there are tour players that play with a weaker grip. Mm -hmm. But that's going to require much more flexion or bowing of the left wrist yep. to get our impact conditions correct. Got it. Okay? Yep. So we're going to put that club right back in a grip. Now we're going to strengthen the grip. So that's turning the lead arm clockwise. Yep. So now we might just see the wrist flatten out. Now it's flat, but we have the same impact conditions. Got it. So if, so if I'm here and I do that, I think that's such a good visual. If this is neutral, the stronger the grip I have, there's going to be more extension. Yes. Typically, right? Yes. And so from there, with my face ready square, it'll be a little bit more probably just a flat. Correct. You said. And if I'm really weak already in the beginning and I'm over here, mm -hmm. shoot, for me to square that thing up. Well, you've got to really go up forward. <laughs> this goes down in quite a bit. I, I mean, now feel you're it. feeling some stretching. And that might be like a John Rahm, old Jordan, Jordan Spieth. Spieth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can do it either way, right? Yeah. Uh, understand that how you grip it is going to affect those. Probably be easier for the normal golfer to be in a neutral, maybe slightly stronger than neutral. Yes. Would you agree with that? Yeah, so a, a simple way of thinking about that. Let's hold the golf club back up. Yeah. So I like to say we're going to take your hands off for one second. Yep. So the top of the grip relative to a square club face is 12 o'clock. Okay. 6 o'clock is underneath. Yep. 7, 8. We're going to put these top three joints 
at about eight o'clock. So oh, when okay. you squeeze it, take your thumb off, let's play tug of war. Yeah. Boom, it I just control. locks right in. Yep, yeah, okay. Eric's got control, I can't get it from him. Eight o'clock. And now that hand, yeah, so basically if your last three ring joints yep. are going on the club, not, not at six o'clock underneath the golf club, got it. but more at eight o'clock on the side of the club. I'd never heard that before, and always little pearls of wisdom from you, Mr. Marty. Now, so let's say the take home from this, which to me, the, to me, the take home from this is is a couple things. Number one, at the setup position, this wants to be pretty. I'm going to rapid fire these, pretty flat, right? Correct. When I go from here to impact, I want to feel like the hands are going up and forward relative yep. to where they start. There's going to be body shit going on. Yeah. Right, but I'm about here at yep. impact. If I can pose from here and learn to make little chip shots, I would say the things you need to add in terms of feeling mm -hmm. to hit the ball solid from there are probably the things you need to add in your normal swing yep. uh, to hit the ball solid. It's like a very good indicator Big time. Right, of the things you need to do. I love that so much and I firmly believe of all the things we talk about, very few things apply universally to every single golfer. Yep. Very few, I think. And that's one of them that does. I like to tell people this only applies to people who want to hit it better. Yeah, if you want to get better at golf, this is probably a good idea. <laughs> so guys, hopefully that helped. I think that's really straightforward. Uh, short, sweet, simple. Thank you, man. That was You're beautiful. welcome. Appreciate good it. You. Thank you. I okay. hope this video helped. I'm Marty Nowicki from Impact Snap, coming to you from Orlando, Florida, Mike Bender's Golf Academy with Eric Cagorno, my friend. Uh, please hit the subscribe button down below. Click the bell notification. That way you get notified when we release more content. Leave your comments down below because that helps us to help create more content for you.